Welcome to the 2022 Washington Elite Athletic Awards Ceremony. This is our opportunity to celebrate yet another highly successful year. And it's so nice to be able to be in person to have this event once again. For those of you who have experienced the ceremony in person in the past, you'll notice there will be some changes. First off, we're in a different venue uh, as we make use of this beautiful new facility. We've also made a few tweaks to the format and we hope that you'll enjoy them. Among these changes is that we'll now show you the finalists for a number of, of the awards as we present them this evening, along with honoring the winners of those awards. For the first time, you will have the opportunity to participate in determining our athletic performance of the year. We have selected four finalists for you to choose from, and we ask you to please vote for your favorite. The winner will be revealed a bit later this evening. But for now, you'll need to know which performances you can choose from and how you'll vote. Please direct your attention to the screen behind me for information on the top Our first top performance comes from the fall season and recognizes a team effort. The WNL football team traveled to Randolph-Macon on September 25th for a key conference matchup. The Yellow Jackets had just won the ODAC title last spring and were ranked 16th nationally. Trailing 24-17, with 7.38 remaining in the game, the Generals marched 99 yards on 17 plays, draining the entire clock. In the course of the decisive drive, senior quarterback Jack Pollard was injured and could not continue. Stepping up in Pollard's place was sophomore Stephen Murren, who led the Generals for the final seven plays, including scoring the winning touchdown on a fourth and goal from the one-yard line with one second remaining. Head coach Garrett LaRose decided to go for two in the win, and senior running back Josh Brees easily scored on the play to give the Generals a 25-24 win and a leg up on the rest of the league in its quest for the league title. Our next top performance occurred during the winter season at the ODAC Swimming Championship in Greensboro on February 10th through 13th. After not competing at the 2021 championship due to COVID, the WNL women were poised to recapture the league title. The Generals showed why they're the class of the league recording 957 points, that's 413 more than second place Randolph Macon. A major reason for the Generals' domination was the swimming of sophomore Bryn Martinson, who was responsible for accumulating the most points of any swimmer at the championship. She won the 50 freestyle, 100 freestyle, and 200 freestyle, while also being a member of the winning 200 free relay, 400 free relay, 200 medley relay, and 400 medley relay teams. All told, she personally had a hand in 220 of WNL's 957 team points. Her 100 free time of 51.27 seconds set a new program record, ODAC championship meet record, and conference record. Additionally, her 50 free split for the 200 free relay set a school meet and conference record as well. She went on to be named both the ODAC rookie and swimmer of the meet. The next contender for the top performance of the year also featured a winter sport. On March 11th, senior Joe O'Connor competed at the NCAA Division III Indoor Track and Field Championship. His long-awaited debut at the Indoor Championship was anything but a disappointment. Joe took full advantage of the pole vault, clearing his first four attempts through 4.9 meters. He needed two tries to clear 4.95 meters and three more to clear 5 meters. He then cleared the bar on his first vault at 5.05 meters, but came up short three times at 5.1 meters. His height of 5.05 meters tied for the best height cleared at the championship, but the tiebreaker was awarded to Ben Drummy of Southern Maine, who needed just two attempts to clear five meters as opposed to three for O'Connor. Joe finished as the national runner-up and earned All-America honors for his performance. Our final top performance nominee shifts back to an outstanding team effort. The Washington and Lee women's golf team won its fourth straight ODAC championship just three weeks ago in dominating fashion. The Generals opened the tournament by setting an ODAC championship scoring record on the first day with a 3-0-1 for a 14-stroke lead over Bridgewater. WNL's lead grew to 17 strokes after the second day, and then on the third day, the Generals once again set the scoring record, this time guarding a 300 to win the tournament by 24 strokes over Lynchburg. The Blue and White's total of 909 also set a new program record for the lowest 54-hole scoring mark. All five generals placed in the top 10 at the championship, led by junior Megan Canaby, who placed second overall with the third lowest 54-hole scoring total in program history. You can cast your vote by scanning the QR code on the screen or by visiting go.wlu.edu slash award vote. The winner of the performance of the year will be announced later in the ceremony.
We're going to leave that up there for just a, a few seconds to let you go ahead and scan that QR code or type in that URL. Please remember to go ahead and record your vote. I'll now turn the program over to our Director of Athletics, Jan Hathorne. Thank you, Brian. Hi, everybody. Ah, oh, come on. Where's our spirit? Hi, everyone. Perfect. Perfect. Glad to be here tonight. We're here to celebrate you and all the things that you have accomplished. In the words of Stephen Curry, success is not an accident, success is a choice. When I saw this quote, I immediately thought of all the choices you have made this year while you strive to be as successful as you can be in the many things you do. As you know more than I do and know so well, striving to be your best is not easy. And from the outcomes of your efforts, it's clear you found many ways to make the tough choices that have allowed you to excel in your chosen sport, your academics, and your campus life. Of all things I could say to you this evening, I think the most important thing I can say is we see you. We see how hard you work, how tough this is, and how dedicated you are, and we applaud you for that resilience and that sacrifice, perseverance, passion, teamwork, and diligence that you've displayed to achieve all that you've achieved, whether it's in the classroom, in your sport, and as members of the WNL community. We are tremendously proud of you for all that you've done and all that you continue to be. You've represented yourselves and WNL with class and distinction once again this year, and I just want to say thank you, well done. Com applaud yourselves for your excellent efforts. So we've got a lot of things we need to cover. I've got a lot of really awesome end of year information to share. And I'm going to attempt to read every name of each person and each team that has received an honor to this point. I appreciate your forbearance as I do this because it's a lot of names and a lot of teams because you guys have been so successful. But I really believe it's important to say every name and team to honor all of your impressive work and to allow all of us to see just how many of you have excelled this year. So this is gonna, I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster, so hold on until the very end, we'll applaud for everybody at the end, okay? All right, so as of today, WNL has 535 total student athletes, 47 multi-sport athletes, 27 women, 20 men, 173 all-conference athletes. You won 11 conference titles in equestrian, field hockey, football, women's golf, women's lacrosse, men's swimming, women's swimming, men's tennis, women's tennis, volleyball, and wrestling. You won 11, or 11 teams competed in NCAAs with women's lacrosse still competing. Those teams are women's basketball, field hockey, football, men's golf, women's golf, men's lacrosse, women's lacrosse, men's soccer, men's tennis, women's tennis, and volleyball. 13 individuals competed in NCAAs or national level competition with men's and women's track and fields qualifiers still to be announced. Those individuals are Lexi Patton, equestrian, Caroline to Carolyn Todd, women's cross country, Ryan Luth, wrestling, Riley Parker, wrestling, Carolyn Baber, women's swimming, Claudia Barnett, women's swimming, uh, Bryn Martinson, women's swimming, Sophia Rolo, women's swimming, Turner Bobbitt, women's swimming, Alyssa Utek, women's swimming. Sarah Gaston, women's swimming. Joe O'Connor, men's indoor track and field. Caitlin Gamble, women's indoor track and field. And Taylor Garcia, women's tennis. Eight of you were conference players of the year. Sarah Amel, field hockey for defensive player of the year. Sydney Hefner, volleyball. Tess Munessis, field hockey offensive player. Bryn Martinson, women's swimming. Megan Horn, women's basketball. Jillian Rosenwasser, riding. Eugenie Revenio, women's lacrosse defensive player. And Gabby Moss, women's tennis. Six of you were ODAC Scholar Athletes of the Year. 
Tess Munessis, field hockey, Chloe Rapier, women's soccer, Claudia Barnett, women's swimming, Sam Johnson, riding, Pierce Robinson, men's golf, and Nick Spagnoletti, men's lacrosse. Eight of you were conference rookies of the year. Wamey Agbe, Agbe, men's soccer, Bryn Martinson, women's swimming, Matt Snyder, men's swimming, Josh Fingerhut, men's indoor track and field, Josh Fingerhut, men's cross country, Caitlin Gamble, women's indoor track and field, Letitia Regner, women's golf, and Will Kissler, men's tennis. 20 of you are all Americans, and there's still additional spring sports honors that could happen. First team All-Americans, Sarah Amel, field hockey, Caitlin Gamble, women's indoor track and field, Ryan Luth, wrestling, Gabby Moss, women's tennis, Tess Munesses, field hockey, Joe O'Connor, men's indoor track and field, Riley Parker, wrestling, Jack Rollins, men's soccer, Eugenie Revenio, women's lacrosse. Second team All-American, Samuel Bass, men's soccer, Michael Kutzenzera, men's soccer, Nick Spagnoletti, men's lacrosse. Right on cue. Third team All-Americans, Kaylee Fitzgerald, field hockey, Allie Schwab, women's lacrosse, and honorable mention All-Americans, Claudia Barnett, women's swimming, Hannah Bishop, women's lacrosse, Turner Bobbitt, women's swimming, Megan Horn, women's basketball, Bryn Martinson, women's swimming, and Sophia Rolo, women's swimming. 13 Conference Coaches of the Year, Garrett LaRose, football, Mike Singleton, men's soccer, Brian Snyder, volleyball, Gina Wills, field hockey, Cami Gardner, women's swimming, Cami Gardner, men's swimming, Nathan Shearer, wrestling, Christine Clancy, women's basketball, Gordon Rystrup, riding, Kelsey Carolero, women's golf, Brooke O'Brien, women's lacrosse, Aaron Ness, women's tennis, and David Detweiler, men's tennis. And the coup d'etat is 445 of you are WNL scholar athletes, a 3.5 GPA or better. That's the third year in a row you broke your record. 29 of you got a 4.0 GPA in both winter and fall terms. Phenomenal. So who are those 29 people? We're going to hear their names because it's phenomenal accomplishment. Sarah Amel, field hockey. Carson Cooley, men's soccer. Josh Fingerhut, men's cross country and track. Estelle Fisher, women's swimming. Abby Hamilton, field hockey. Brianna Hatch, women's cross country track. Sarah Holland, women's cross country track. Anna Hurst, women's track and field. Spencer Chris, men's lacrosse. Sarah Lathrop, women's soccer. Caroline Lennon, women's cross country and track. Grace McDonald, field hockey. Ned Mize, men's lacrosse. Elise Molinaro, women's cross country track. Zach Moore, men's track and field. Nick Mosher, football. Bobby Nooner, men's tennis. Peyton Pack, football. Ter Terry Phillips, women's basketball. Chloe Rapier, women's soccer. John Raymond, baseball. Logan Robinson, men's swimming. Emily Sansbury, women's soccer. Izzy Shaffrey, women's lacrosse. Brad Singer, wrestling. Ashwin Suresh, baseball. Joseph Tarquin, wrestling. Peyton Tysinger, field hockey. And Kyle Wood, football. Rock on! So if your name or your team was called, would you please stand so we can recognize you and clap for you? Stand up. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Stand up and be proud of what you've done. Oh, my goodness. Well, now if you turn your attention to the screen, we will show you the year in review, which highlights all the things that I just said to you.
awesome. One last thing, by the way, I'm pleased to announce that WNL has, for the seventh straight year, won the ODAC Commissioner's Cup for overall excellence in the conference. This is the 20th straight year WNL has won the overall cup. We also claim the Women's Cup for the 19th straight year and won the Men's Cup for the sixth straight year and swept all three cups for the seventh straight year. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'll turn the podium over to Neil Cunningham, Director of PE. Good evening. It's my pleasure to present the Richard Miller uh, Physical Education Scholarship. Established in 1984, the Richard Miller PE Award is presented annually to a WNL student who has demonstrated excellence in all their PE classes. This year's recipient of PE Scholarship is a politics major with studio art and mass communications minors. He's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Richard Miller Physical Education Scholarship goes to Todd Eccles. Todd is unfortunately not here. He's enjoying Washington term. Now let's turn the podium over to Brian Lobshaw. Unfortunately, Dean Evans wasn't feeling well today, so I'll present the J.L. Lefty Newell Award. Established in 19, 1984, the Lefty Newell Award is presented annually to a non-playing student who has served WNL teams as an outstanding volunteer and contributed to the success of those teams. Recent recipients of this prestigious award include Whitley Drinkard, class of 2020, and Austin Lee, class of 2021. This year's recipient of the Lefty Newell Award was a three-year manager for the volleyball team. He helped track team statistics, was involved with collect collecting and breaking down video, and running drills for practices. Additionally, he ran match warm-ups, and this past season he was even responsible for calling in defensive calls during the matches. He occasionally traveled with the team, and he was especially important during the 2020-21 season when he kept balls separated during practice to keep the team within COVID protocols. According to head coach Brian Snyder, he's gone above and beyond whatever could be expecting of him, adding, he was the best student assistant that I've ever had. This year's JL Lefty Newell Award winner is Joshua Valdez. I'll turn the program over to Matt Tuckler, who will present the Chubb Yakel Award. Hello, um, members of the WNL community. I am pleased and honored to present the 2022 RE Chubb Yakel Service Award. This award was established in 1986 and is presented annually to the individual within the university community who has made outstanding contributions to the Department of Athletics and Physical Education. Recipients, recent recipients of this prestigious award include former baseball coach Jeff Stickley, former co soccer coach Ralph Peranian, and athletic custodian Sheila Campbell. This year's recipient of the Chug Chubb Yakel Award has served the university for 21 years as the head coach of the women's soccer program. In addition, for the last 14 years, he has also served as the director of physical education and assistant director of athletics. His list of accomplishments as a coach are numerous. He has guided the generals to four conference titles and six NCAA tournament berths. His winning percentage ranks among the best in Division III history. 
He's been named the Region Coach of the Year three times. As Director of Physical Education, he's ensured that each WNL student gains an appreciation for sports and physical activity, strengthening their mind and body in keeping with the university's stated mission. While he is leaving Washington Lee to become the Director of Athletics at St. Andrews School in Delaware, the impact that he has had on the WL community will be a legacy that will continue for years to come. And that we recognize by awarding the 2022 R.E. Chubb Yakel Award to Neil Cunningham. I want to thank the Brookby family for the generous support of this award ceremony. Former student athletes Harry Brookby, class of 66, and his brother Bo, class of 72, and their mother, Mrs. Harry Brookby, gave a generous gift to Washington and Lee Athletics as an expression of their love and appreciation for the university and to honor what WNL Athletics has meant to them and their family throughout the years. They, their gift helped sponsor this event. The Brookbys cannot be here this evening, but if we could give them a round of applause to thank them for their generosity. Teamwork, pure and simple. That's what describes the great work of our colleagues who support us with what we need when we need it so we can be the best, our best every day. These people do all the behind the scenes work, mowing, washing, cleaning, organizing, filing, assisting in thousands of ways. Most of them dislike public recognition. Many of them are not here, but don't be mistaken. They take great personal pride in their work because they take great pride in you and in WNL. Please join me in thanking them for their hard work and dedication. <laughs> Administrative assistants, Carolyn Mayo and Wanda Scott. Certified athletic trainers, Josh Williamson, Matt Phillips, Katie Shank, Marin Wood, and Brian Duclos. <laughs> Manager of facilities and equipment, Chris Wheeler. Equipment and Facilities Maintenance Crew, Outdoor Crew, Tommy Mays, Tim Hill, Mike Mayo, Matthew Nicely, John Roberts, and J.B. Harris. <laughs> Indoor Crew, Mike Pelka, Debbie Brown, William Hicks, Carolyn McNeil, and Garfield Garrison. <laughs> Strength and Conditioning and Fitness Center, Patty Colleton, Aaron Gibson, and Greg Wilson. And to the people who make this and all that record-setting statistical work possible through their tireless efforts throughout the year, our Athletics Communications Office, Director Brian Lobsher, Associate Director Will Wallace, and Athletic Broadcaster and Multimedia Creative Specialist Ryan Connell. <laughs> to each and every one of you, we thank you for another amazing year. So colleagues near and dear to us will be moving on or have already transitioned to new phases of their lives, and I want to publicly thank them for, for their tireless and selfless service. If, if they're in the audience, if you are in the audience this evening, please stand to be recognized when I call your name. Megan Carroll, Assistant women's Coach of Women's Soccer. Megan departed WNL in December to become an athletics, uh, Assistant Athletics Academic Coordinator at the University of South Florida. She played an important role in the success of the past two women's soccer seasons. And although Meg could not be with us tonight, I wish I'd ask that you join me in thanking her for her outstanding contributions. <laughs> Emma Olson, assistant volleyball coach. Emma served in this role for three years and helped lead the team to back-to-back -back conference championships. Quick to be of service and to help, Emma could be seen helping our department whenever we needed additional assistance. Emma left WNL in April to pursue personal and professional goals in Ohio. She cannot be here this evening, but let's thank her for her excellent work. <laughs> Chip Whipple, a Senior Associate Director of Athletics Communications. Chip served in the Athletics Communications Office for nine years and played an essential role in some of the key improvements and upgrades to our sports information services. 
He oversaw eight different sports while also promoting all 24 sports. He served as a department point person for the Journals Club brochure and was a member of the University Athletics Committee. Chip seemed to always have a smile and a positive attitude no matter the situ what situation presented itself. He took a position in the communications office at Kent State University in Ohio in April. Chip is not here this evening, but please join me in thanking him for his outstanding work. <laughs> Brian Lobsher, Director of Athletics Communications. In 1998, Brian arrived on the WNL campus as a sports information director and will complete his 24 year career in his current role, the director of athletics communications. At the end of May, Brian will transition into the university's communications office to become the director of internal communications. Brian has been instrumental in the development of numerous aspects of the sports information office. He helped create our WNL athletics website and oversaw eight different redesigns during his tenure. He was also a key driver behind the addition of internet radio and video broadcasting of WNL sports events, along with several other technological advances that include the pr production of video shows such as the WNL Sports Weekly. Served on the Athletics Hall of Fame Committee, as well as numerous conference and NCAA tournament events, including overseeing all the sports information needs that allowed WNL to host the NCAA Division III Field Hockey Championships in 2007, 2014, and 2015. Under Brian's leadership, WNL Athletics Communications Office has won the ODAC SID Office of the Year Award three times in 2006, 2015, and 2018. A member of the College Sports Information Directors Association, Brian received the Association's 25-year award for his work and longevity in the profession. Brian, thank you for your tremendous and all-encompassing work on behalf of student athletes, sports programs, the department, and the university. There is so much more to the job than simply keeping stats, and your record of achievement speaks to the ways you have given of yourself and your time to promote the outstanding achievements of everyone in athletics. We're so glad you're just moving across campus, and we wish you all the best in your new role. Two minutes, two minutes remaining. Marin Wood, Assistant Athletic Trainer. Marin has been a member of our athletic training staff for four and a half years. A passionate and caring professional, Marin has given tirelessly to the health and well-being of our student athletes, as well as our entire campus. As well as our entire campus, when she served as the coordinator of the COVID care team during the 2020-2021 academic year. Marin will be taking a position at the Foxcroft School as Assistant Athletic Director and Head Athletic Trainer. Marin, are you here? There you are. Congratulations. <laughs> Marin, thank you on many levels for your dedication, commitment, and caring concern for our students and for giving so much of yourself so willingly for the betterment of their well being. You have set a high standard. We will miss you and we wish you all kinds of success in your new position. And Neil Cunningham, head coach of women's soccer, assistant uh, director of athletics, director of physical education. After 21 years as a head coach of women's soccer, Neil will be stepping away at the end of May to become the director of athletics at St. Andrews School in Delaware. The women's soccer program under Neil's leadership has flourished. Neil's teams compiled a 287, 68, and 37 overall record for 78% winning set percentage had double-digit wins 20 times, won four ODAC titles in 02, 03, 09, and 2016, made, and made six trips to the NCAA Division III National Tournament. The 2006 team had the most successful season in program history when the Generals compiled a 19-1-3 record and advanced to the NCAA Division III quarterfinals while posting a 9-0-2 mark in the ODAC. 126 players on his teams achieved all, all, all ODAC honors, while 45 received all region honors, and eight became All-Americans. He was chosen as the ODAC Coach of the Year four times, All-Region Coach of the Year three times. His 349 wins over his career has him tied as 11th most in active Division III women's soccer coaches 
and his overall 758 winning percentage ranks him 12th among Division III coach, active Division III coaches. Neil's also served as Assistant Director of Athletics, Director of Physical Education for 14 years, and was instrumental in creating the standards of learning assessments for each of our 100 level physical education courses, while also creating new courses and developing the first ever virtual physical education course during the pandemic. Neil, there are very few words that adequately and accurately express our appreciation for the many ways you have made us better. Your spirited personality, passionate belief in the value of our work, and dedication to the success of our student athletes has set a high bar for excellence in our department and has been an example for all of us for many years. Suffice it to say, you have made a difference and we are the better for it. Thank you, thank you, many times over for your professionalism, your quick wit, your ready support, and most importantly, your friendship. We love you and we will miss you. Now I turn the podium over to Bethany Danley, Associate Director of Athletics. WNL community members, it's my pleasure to present the Wink Glasgow Spirit and Sportsmanship Award. Established in 1959, the Wink Glasgow Award is presented annually to the WNL senior who has demonstrated the highest qualities of true WNL spirit and sportsmanship. It's the embodiment of what it means to be a general. Recent re recipients of this prestigious award include Jimmy Mack Johnson in 2020 and Aaron Hughes in 2021. Please direct your attention to the screen for the announcement of our award finalists and our Wink Glasgow Spirit and Sportsmanship Award winner. The finalists for the 2022 Wink Glasgow Spirit and Sportsmanship Award are Aaron Addison, women's basketball, Taylor Garcia, women's tennis, Michael Nick, men's soccer. This year's recipient of the Wink Glasgow Spirit and Sportsmanship Award is a native of Waxhaw, North Carolina, and is a four-year letter winner and two-year captain of the women's basketball team. On the court, she has played a key role in this team's success over her four seasons. She's played in 83 career games as a guard, averaging five points, 2.4 rebounds, 1.4 assists, and about a steal per game. She scored a career-best 20 points in a 79-77 win over Lynchburg in the ODAC Tournament quarterfinals during her rookie season, and this past season helped the team set a program record for wins in a season, going 20-7 overall. This all culminated with the team's first trip to the NCAA Tournament in 12 years. Her dedication to her team led to her receiving the team's Barry F. Machado Award for dedication and commitment in 2019. Off the court, she is a founding member of the Perry Minority Athlete Coalition and serves on the PMAC Executive Board, working tirelessly to support minority student-athletes on the WNL campus. Her coach, Christine Clancy, describes her as a leader that genuinely and selflessly celebrates other people's successes and that she will graduate having left a lasting impact on the campus, the Department of Athletics, and the women's basketball program. This year's Wink Glasgow Spirit and Sportsmanship Award recipient is senior women's basketball player Aaron Addison. Now turn the program over to Dean Sean Kimber to present the Outstanding First Year Athlete Awards. Hey, hi. It is my pleasure to present the Outstanding First Year Athlete Awards. Established in 1960, the Outstanding First Year Athlete Awards are presented annually to a men's sport athlete and women's sport athlete showing the most athletic ability through their participation in varsity sports. Attitude spirit and sportsmanship are emphasized in selecting the recipient. Recent men's sport recipients include Samuel Bass in 2020, Jack Dontremont in 2021. Recent women's sports recipients include Ali Schwab in 2020 and Caitlin Gamble in 2021. 
please direct your attention to the screen for the announcement of our award finalists and the 2022 Men's Sport recipient of the Outstanding First Year Athlete Award. The finalists for the 2022 Outstanding First Year Men's Sport Athlete Award are Wamey Agbe Agbe, Men's Soccer, Evan Blair, Baseball, Matt Snyder, Men's Swimming. This year's men's sport recipient of the Outstanding First Year Athlete Award is a native of Atlanta, Georgia, and he had a dominating season with the men's soccer team. He played in all 22 games, receiving his first start in the midfield for the Generals in the third game of the season. Needless to say, he kept that starting role for the remainder of the year. His speed and athleticism on the wing helped create matchup problems that allowed WNL's offense to flourish. The Generals went on to finish the season ranked 4th in Division Three in shots per game, 7th in scoring offense, 11th in points per game, 12th in assists per game, and 12th in corner kicks taken. All of those impressive statistics led to the greatest season in program history as the Generals finished 18-2-2 and were ranked number one for much of the season, culminating with the program's first ever trip to the NCAA Final Four. Individually, he finished fifth on the team in scoring with 16 points on five goals and six assists, including producing five multi-point performances throughout the season. He was named second team All-ODAC and second team Vossid All-State and was also tabbed the ODAC Rookie of the Year. This year's outstanding first year men's sport athlete award recipient is soccer player Wamey Agbe Agbe. of the finalists and the winner of the 2022 Women's Sport Recipient and the outs of the Outstanding First Year Athlete Award on the screen. The finalists for the 2022 Outstanding First Year Women's Sport Athlete Award are Letitia Regner, Women's Golf, Quinlan Zunk, Women's Track and Field. This year's Women's Sport recipient of the Outstanding First Year Athlete Award is a native of Greenwich, Connecticut and is a member of the golf team. Her impact on the team was immediate as she helped the Generals set the program scoring record for each of the first two rounds of the season. That trend would continue throughout the year with WNL setting the team scoring record five times. Individually, she had three top ten tournament finishes tied for the most on the team, including a tie for fourth place at the Generals Cup Invitational in October. She went on to place fourth overall at the ODAC Championship, helping the Generals break the ODAC Championship scoring record and producing a new school standard for 54-hole scoring. WNL went on to win the ODAC title by 24 strokes, and she received first-team All-ODAC honors and was presented with the ODAC Rookie of the Year Award. She entered the NCAA Championship as the 34th-ranked player in Division III and helped the Generals to a 13th place finish while individually placing in a tie for 63rd out of 151 golfers in the event. For the year, she competed in 17 of the team's 20 rounds, finishing third on the team with a 78.71 scoring average, which ranks among the top 15 in program history. This year's Outstanding First Year Women's Sport Athlete Award recipient is golfer Letitia Regner. Associate Dean Fred LaRiviere. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to present the William D. McHenry Scholar Athlete Awards. Established in 1986, the McHenry Scholar Athlete Awards are presented annually to a men's sport and women's sport student athlete who has excelled in both the classroom and the field of play. The awardees must have a cumulative grade point average of at least a 3.5 and must have made outstanding contributions to intercollegiate athletics at WNL. Recent women's sport recipients include Emily Hedgeback, class of 2020, and Courtney Berry, class of 2021. 
Recent men's sports recipients uh, include Brian PC, class of 2020, and Bryce Crew, class of 21, 2021. Please direct your attention to the screen for the announcement of our award finalists in the 2022 Women's Sport Recipient of the William McHenry Scholar Athlete Award. The finalists for the 2022 William McHenry Women's Sports Scholar Athlete Award are Claudia Barnett, Women's Swimming, Caroline Hall, Women's Lacrosse, Sam Johnson, Equestrian. This year's female recipient of the William McHenry Scholar Athlete Award is a native of Skillman, New Jersey, and is a four-year letter winner and two-year captain of the equestrian team. She has proven to be one of the team's top competitors throughout the entirety of her WNL athletic career. Each year, the ODAC championship is determined by the point totals accrued by four individual riders who are selected to represent each team in competition. She was selected to WNL's four-person team three times in her career, but the only other time occurring in 2020 when COVID canceled the championship. Over the last three years, no other competitor has scored more points in IHSA competition than she has, while twice she finished as the runner-up for the regional high point rider. A 2019 first-team All-ODAC honoree, she has qualified for the IHSA Regional Championship three times, and she advanced to the IHSA Zones competition during her senior season when she helped lead the Generals to a regional and conference championship. An economics major, she earned the 2022 ODAC Equestrian Scholar Athlete of the Year Award, and she's a four-year member of the IHSA All-Academic First Team. She's also a four-year WNL Scholar Athlete and a member of the ODAC All-Academic Team. This year's William McHenry Women's Sports Scholar Athlete Award recipient is senior equestrian rider Sam Johnson. And now, the announcement of the finalists and the winner of the 2022 Men's Sport Recipient of the William McHenry Scholar Athlete Award. The finalists for the 2022 William McHenry Men's Sport Scholar Athlete Award are Nick Mosier, Football, Nick Spagnoletti, Men's Lacrosse. This year's Men's Sport recipient of the William McHenry Scholar Athlete Award is a native of Madison, New Jersey, and is a member of the men's lacrosse program. He's a four-year letter winner and has made the most of his first year as a starter in goal this spring. Across his first three seasons, he played in a total of 12 games, making 18 saves with 11 goals allowed. This season, he started all 19 games and is a major reason why Washington and Lee is ranked 10th nationally in scoring defense. He got out to a hot start, recording 13 saves in the first game and another 20 in the second, holding then 5th-ranked York to just 8 goals. He has remained consistent throughout, posting double-digit save totals in 13 of his 19 games, including 19 saves against then 10th-ranked Gettysburg, and a career-high 21 saves in back-to-back -back games against number 4 Christopher Newport and arch-rival Roanoke. Along the way, he compiled 214 saves for the season while ranking among the Division III leaders with a 6'11 save percentage. His 8.11 goals against average also ranks among the national leaders. He was named first team all ODAC and was selected as the ODAC Men's Lacrosse Scholar Athlete of the Year. Additionally, Inside Lacrosse named him to its mid-season All-America team. Off the field, the accounting major is a member of Phi Beta Kappa, Beta Alpha Psi National Honor Society, and Beta Gamma Sigma National Business Honor Society. He is a member of the President's List, he is a WNL Scholar Athlete, and a member of the ODAC All-Academic Team. This year's William McHenry Men's Sports Scholar Athlete Award recipient is senior men's lacrosse player Nick Spagnoletti. I'll now turn the program back over to Brian Lobsher, who will announce the performance of the year.
Are we ready to find out who you all voted for, for the performance of the year? Uh, it will be up on the screen here momentarily. Looks like our performance of the year is Joe O'Connor, track and field. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. Next up is President Will Dudley. All right, good to see you all. You're looking sharp tonight. Watching you play, best part of my job, hands down. It's my pleasure to present the Preston R. Brown Most Valuable Athlete Awards. Established in 1954, the Press Brown Awards are presented annually to the most valuable senior men's sport and senior women's sport athlete. They're awarded to the athletes who excel in sportsmanship and cr contribute the most to athletics based on their overall performance during the entirety of their college careers. Recent men's sports recipients include Brian Peasy, class of 2020, and William Brueggemann, class of 2021. Recent women's sports recipients include Caitlin Anderson, class of 2020, and Landon Shelley, class of 2021. Please direct your attention to the screen for the announcement of the finalists and the recipient of the 2022 Men's Sport Prez Brown Award. The finalists for the 2022 Press Brown Most Valuable Men's Sport Athlete Award are Josh Brees, football, Joe O'Connor, men's track and field, Jack Rollins, men's soccer. This year's Men's Sport recipient of the Press Brown Most Valuable Athlete Award is a native of Henrico, Virginia, and is a four-year letter winner and two-year captain of the men's track and field team. He competes in the jumps, hurdles, and pole vault, and has time and again proven himself to be one of the top competitors in the ODAC Conference, the South Region, and all of Division III. His athletic prowess was evident from the very beginning as he won conference championships in the indoor and outdoor pole vault and the outdoor high jump during his rookie campaign. He went on to be named the ODAC Rookie of the Meet and the ODAC Field Athlete of the Meet on his way to garnering the WNL Outstanding First Year Men's Sport Athlete Award back in 2019. His next three years did nothing but solidify his position as one of the top track and field athletes in school history. He has still never lost an ODAC pole vault competition, winning eight individual ODAC championships. He's won the indoor or outdoor pole vault five times, the high jump twice, and the 60 meter hurdles once. He has been named to the All-Region Team six times across three different events, and he has qualified for the NCAA Division III National Championship three times. As a sophomore, he qualified for the NCAA Indoor Championship in the pole vault, but never had the opportunity to compete due to the onset of COVID. He was still selected as a first-team All-American, WNL's first men's track and field All-American in five years. As a junior, there was no indoor championships, but he competed outdoors and once again qualified for the NCAA championship, finishing ninth overall in the pole vault, just one spot away from earning a second All-America citation. Back to a full schedule this year, he has made the most of every opportunity, winning the ODAC pole vault championship in both the indoor and outdoor seasons. He once again qualified for the NCAA indoor championship and earned his second All-America award after he cleared 5.05 meters at the national championship. It tied for the highest vault clear to the championship, and he finished as the NCAA runner-up via tiebreaker. He currently holds the ODAC and WNL indoor pole vault record at 5.1 meters, and just this past weekend set a new ODAC and WNL standard in the outdoor pole vault with a vault of 5.05 meters. That mark is currently tied for the best in Division Three this season and will once again earn him a berth to the NCAA outdoor championship later this month. His time of 8.37 seconds in the 60-meter hurdles is also a school record, while his time of 15.25 seconds in the 110-meter hurdles and his high jump of 1.95 meters are both second-best in program history. This year's recipient of the Press Brown Most Valuable Men's Sport Athlete Award also received the WNL Outstanding First Year Athlete Award in 2019. He is senior track and field athlete Joe O'Connor. And now the announcement of the finalists and the recipient of the 2022 Women's Sport Press Brown Award. The finalists for the 2022 Press Brown Most Valuable Women's Sport Athlete Award are Sarah Amel, field hockey, Caroline Baber, women's swimming, Megan Horn, women's basketball.
This year's Women's Sports recipient of the Press Brown Most Valuable Athlete Award is a native of North Caldwell, New Jersey, and a member of the field hockey team. As a goalkeeper, she earned four letters, was a three-year starter, and was a team captain for her senior season. She played in just one game as a rookie in 2018, but she took over as a starter during her sophomore season and has been a fixture in the cage ever since. Her 2019 season ranked as one of the best in program history and was a harbinger of things to come. She set a program record for goals against average and shutouts in a season and leading the Generals to the ODAC semifinals. As a junior last spring, she once again carried one of the ODAC's best defensive units. She finished second in the conference in both goals against average and save percentage on her way to garnering first-team All-ODAC and first-team All-State laurels. She was also named the ODAC and State Defensive Player of the Year as WNL advanced to the ODAC championship game. Her senior campaign only served to enhance her standing among the all-time greats in Washington and Lee field hockey history. She produced a career-best 85 saves and broke her own school record for shutouts in a season with eight. She ranked third in Division Three and set a new program record with a .842 save percentage, and her 0.93 goals against average broke her own school record and ranked 19th nationally. As a team, the Generals finished an incredible 18-1, winning the conference title and advancing to the NCAA Regional Final for the first time in program history. She repeated again as ODAC Defensive Player of the Year, was first-team All-Conference, first-team All-State, first-team All-Region, and was a first-team All-American. She completed her amazing career with a school record for both goals against average in 1.08 and shutouts with 19, and she finished second all-time in save percentage at .799. This year's Press Brown Most Valuable Women's Sport Athlete Award recipient is senior field hockey player Sarah Amel. Sarah is studying abroad, so she's not with us this evening. It's now my pleasure to present the inaugural Athlete of the Year Award. This is a new award. The Athlete of the Year will be presented annually to the Washington Lee student athlete who has achieved the most in athletic competition during the current athletic year. Please direct your attention to the screen for the announcement of our finalists and our 2021-2022 Athlete of the Year. The finalists for the 2022 Athlete of the Year Award are Caitlin Gamble, Women's Track and Field, Ryan Luth, Wrestling, Joe O'Connor, Men's Track and Field. The recipient of the inaugural Athlete of the Year Award is a native of Milford, Connecticut and a member of the wrestling program. After producing a 46-5 record across his first two years, expectations were high for his junior season, and he certainly delivered. After taking the 2020-21 year off, he began the fall as the top-ranked 157-pound wrestler in the Southeast region, and he was ranked second nationally in Division III. He maintained a top-10 national ranking the entire season, leading the country with 11 major decision victories. He went on to post a 32-3 overall record, finishing with the fourth most wins in a season in program history. He repeated as the Centennial Conference champion at 157 pounds to earn first-team All-Centennial Conference honors. He also repeated as the Southeast Regional Champion, qualifying for the NCAA National Championship for the second time in his career. On the sport's biggest stage, this general shined by producing a 4-2 record at Nationals to finish fourth overall in his weight class and earn first-team All-American honors. His fourth-place finish was the best by any WNL wrestler in 86 years and helped the Generals to a 14th-place finish as a team. After the season, he added Vossid first-team All-State and NWCA Scholar-Athlete All-America laurels to his already impressive resume. This year's Athlete of the Year Award recipient is junior wrestler Ryan Luth. Congratulations to all of you, and I hand it back to Jan Hathorne for closing remarks. Thank you, President Dudley. All right, just a few more things before we adjourn. We're right at the end. If you are a major award winner this evening, please remain after everyone leaves so we can take some additional photographs. Um, there will be dinner for everyone here in Evans Dining Hall, 
as soon as you head out of here. But before you leave the gym, we'd like to take an all-athlete photo. And so we ask that you would just head back to the bleachers and sit down, and we will take a picture from up here. And then um, once that's over, we can head to dinner. So congratulations, everyone. And as soon as we get the photo, we'll be adjourned. <laughs>